Greetings, my name is Jake. Welcome back to Fire Emblem Awakening the Critique Through. Last time we played through chapter 12 and... You know, I came into that uh, chapter so excited to finally be doing the Volmark because it's, it's when things get so bad. But I also forgot that it being bad means I have to suffer through it being bad. So... Yeah. I came out of that chapter very drained and very displeased and unfortunately we're not done yet because it has a postscript <laughs> my lord i like how we're still in port phalange we have not moved at all but we've received word from pleasure Right. Oh, wow. They actually said it again. And it only took 12 chapters to bring it up again. Huh. Oh, she's a chugging. Okay. Oh my. So, let's see what's going on in the barracks. Ooh, we're chugging today. Why are we chugging so much? Well, this is pointless. No, wrong person. Okay. That's pointless for you. Wait, this is marked as love. Stahl's married. Okay. I also got some supports to do. Oh, we're a chugging. I don't know why. Hey. <sighs> you know, I don't intrinsically mind Easter eggs. And this one is subtle. Because if you don't... Well, it's not subtle, because it's one of the most famous movie quotes of all time. But it's more tasteful than than some other Easter eggs and references that have been in the series. And in other games as well. But it doesn't serve any point. And it only works because of Maribel's name. Which is kind of a southern-sounding name. And... It, it doesn't even work as what she's saying, because the full quote is, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Maribel certainly gives a damn about Krom. Because she's one of his few support chains. So, not a good start. Wait, why was she studying on her feet? How was she studying on her feet? So, uh... <sighs> hey. Yes. Ooh. We're chugging today. I do not know why we're chugging today. <sighs> uh, yeah, not good support chain. Or not good support. Uh, we'll see how the, the rest of the chain goes. What? Huh? Darling. 
Yeah, why are we... We are getting some weird slowdown. Um, I might restart the emulator in between... Um, once we're done with the sports. Fine to set up a support chain. Uh, I think it would have been a better touch if Donald couldn't read. Because, um, you know, he's a slop farmer, you know. Um, but that's that's fine. A. Literally A. I didn't mean that. <laughs> So this is something that Awakening does quite a bit. It ends its A supports uh, between uh, characters who have S supports on vaguely almost romantic uh, inklings. And then it, it just undoes it. And while that can make the ensuing S support seem more natural, when it happens with uh, someone who's already paired off or who you don't want to pair with someone it can end up weakening the thing as the whole uh, the, the support as a whole it's like how in sacred stones uh joshua's b support with natasha has him saying um i bet i can make you fall with me but that time but but by that time she can be paired off with seth um I don't know why you'd pair her with Seth because Seth deserves way better than that. But then again, I don't know why you'd pair her with Joshua because Joshua deserves death. All right, I'm gonna reset my uh, emulator here because we're getting some weird slowdown that doesn't normally happen. I'll be right back. So I wanted to do a little pre-commentary uh, right at the start here while I'm doing some inventory management off screen, uh, just to talk about this upcoming chapter, because chapter 13 is probably, this is probably gonna be a, a two-parter, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first is that this chapter is kind of difficult, so it might take me a couple tries to beat it. The other reason is that chapter 13 is a weirdly narratively dense chapter. There's a lot of reveals, a lot of plot points that come up, and unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your preference, uh, I have a lot of things to say about almost all of them. Uh, so I'm going to spend a lot of time in this chapter just talking about the things that are going on narratively uh, before we even get to the gameplay. So uh, I just wanted to let you know up front, this is almost certainly not going to be the full full uh, chapter 13. And I think this is going to become more common as the Volm arc goes on because the Volm arc chapters are usually longer and more involved and can be horribly unfair. Uh, so this is a bit of a trend that's going to keep going for a while. Um, possibly through the rest of the, the series, maybe the paralogues with the children are going to be difficult. But got a lot of things to say in this chapter. Um, so I just wanted to preface that at the beginning here. All right, welcome back from the pre-commentary. Um, I think we're all set here. I don't think there's anything else I want to do. 
Um, so let's go ahead and get into the the tangled mess, the dense ball of exposition that is chapter 13. I know why Validar is king, but why is Validar king? Like, I know it's because, you know, Grima and all that stuff, but what was the in-universe explanation? Does he just have Grima's power now when Grima was able to convince him of everything? I just... This is so dumb. Like, have this conversation afterwards. Don't have it now. I know it's kind of in character for Crumb, but a wet fart should be telling him to shut up that this is a, you know, a, this is a royal meeting and he should be on his best behavior. Frederick should be telling him that instead, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because Frederick's right there and I'm sure he's going to be very, very important in this scene. Stop it! Stop whispering! Right. Now then. Well. What? Thank you. So, Aversa and Validar are being suspiciously generous, but the music and how they look, and the fact that we know that he's the assassin that went after Emerin and that he spoke with Grima, all of this communicates to the audience that there's something wrong. And so it's not interesting. You know, when Gangra was being a conniving little dick, it worked because he was a conniving little dick and he was entertaining and he was effective and his actions were explained to a point where you can understand the justification. Um, and, and not to say that, you know, everything needs to have an immediate justification. This can be set up, but you already know the answer. It's that they're evil. You don't know exactly what they're going to do with everything that's going on, but you know they're evil. If the game has the game is up already. You already know this, and to a certain extent, so do the characters here. <sighs> really now. Now this, this next bit, is really bad. It's so bad. Um, 
Oh my goodness, who could it be under that robe? I would like to know that as well, Krom. What is the meaning of this? Why does this reveal happen? Why does it happen now? What's the point in telling us? I don't understand why it's here. What information is it giving to us and giving to the characters? At best, it's foreshadowing the next arc, but that's only because there's nothing interesting happening relevant to this arc. I don't... And, and we, again, we, the audience, already know that this is Grima. There's no mystery here. It's not setting anything up. It's setting up, you know, it's getting us to wonder exactly what's going to happen next. But we know what's going to happen next because this has already been revealed to be Grima. And so the fact that it looks exactly like us is, is the most interesting mystery about this. But we also know that Lucina is from the future. And even if we haven't figured that out, you know, intuitively from the massive, massive cues, it's going to tell us by the end of this episode. And it's also going to tell us in another way that we're Grima. Why? It, it's a reveal just to be shocking. Just to, to go, dun, dun, dun. Isn't this so crazy? It doesn't serve a narrative purpose. It doesn't inform the plot or the actions. It doesn't raise a mystery. It doesn't do anything. And it's not as though the characters are going to spend their time in the future wondering about this, trying to figure it out, and we can enjoy them figuring out what this all is. This isn't going to come up again until the Volmark is over. And I was thinking about this uh, earlier. What happened to the Risen problem after after Gangrel? See, the, the... Awakening missed a big, big trick by having... They, they, by having the Risen appear so late. I understand why they did, but they should have been replaced with, uh, you know, uh, bandits from Plegia. And... They should not have revealed the third arc. Well, maybe they should have introduced the third arc here. That's that. That's fine. At the towards the beginning of the second arc, you know, a bit of foreshadowing is good. But giving it all away is not. And this is raising a quote-unquote mystery that's not going to get examined or you know, anything for 10 chapters, I think? Something like that? But anyway, there's a lot of shit to shovel in this chapter. Let's keep going. <laughs> and this should be the time when Krom and Wetfart discuss Validar. This should be the time when they do that. And they think through, like, well, how could it be that person? We killed them. And then you can, like, think through it of, like, is there, you know, are we mistaken? Is this other people? That's how you work through a mystery. But instead, we're on to the next big reveal.
Heed my call. <laughs> this isn't shocking. Well, I mean, it is shocking because we couldn't have predicted it. Because it wasn't intimated at all. And to be fair, sometimes, you know, shocking things can work because you're not exactly seeing them coming. But they should be inside the realm of possibility. Um, a good example is Halo Reach. Um, sorry for spoilers if you've never played that game. But at a certain point in, in that game, uh, one of your... Uh, well, not party members. One of the one of your team members um, is killed mid sentence by a sniper, and um, and they're from you know a gunship that's shooting in through a broken window, and then you know one of your teammates grabs your fallen comrade, and the rest of you open fire on this gunship, but they they're you know they're pulling away and everything. That's how you do a shocking you know un um a twist that has not been built up to because it's still within the bounds of you know realm of possibility you've been fighting these sorts of snipers for this long and giving more away you've also lost comrades by this point so it works in shocking and surprising you because you underst but but still works you know, narratively, because you understand that this is possible. There has been nothing to indicate thus far that Valadar is a wet fart's father. You know, there's even when he found us in in um in the in the Elysian Palace, he didn't intimate that at all it was just oh this thing has been lost to me and it's like okay so a wet fart's important not you know parentage there's nothing to indicate that and he also doesn't look like us and you know not everyone looks is the spitting image of their parents but like even his facial features and his eye color and his body shape none of it fits and you can also choose a different body shape and so this is another back-to-back -back pointless reveal to be shocking that ultimately undercuts the story because it's not it's not inferred at all you know a, a good twist ultimately should be something that the audience might be able to figure out if they were paying attention and once it's explained they should be able to go back and say oh this is where this is suggested this is where it was suggested and it also makes sense and ideally you'd want it to be make some sort of message about the story you know have it be uh symbolically or thematically important um this is none of those things and i really really hate it um, and again, th this gets a little more traction. This gets a little more, you know, um, talking than um, than Grima does um, between now and when it becomes important again. But it's still not enough. And the next arc is not does not involve the characters processing this in any way because this game can't do character development that isn't tied to the main story and it can barely do character development that is tied to the main story <sighs> so i i really i really hate this i really it's it really really gets under my skin what hmm. and that just that line right there reeks of search your feelings, you know it to be true. It's trying to be, you know, uh, Empire Strikes Back. 
but <sighs> you know at, at the very least empire strikes back has that moment where the emperor says to darth vader yes i believe he is the son of anakin skywalker and you know watching that movie again once you know that you know, Vader is Anakin Skywalker and Luke is his son and all that stuff. And I, Luke, I am your father, that whole stuff. Um, actually, it's not Luke, I am your father. That's a common, you know, sort of Mandela effect thing. It's actually, no, I am your father. But anyway, once you know that, you can look back in that scene and there's a moment of... There's a pause that Darth Vader does. And it's a little bit of him responding to hearing his old name and he's realizing that Luke is his son. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's also a twist that you can't really predict. But at the very least, once it is revealed, you can go back and you can... Um, and, and see how it was foreshadowed. And not to continue to complain about this, but I mentioned in the previous episode that Validar is not in Heroes. And I think more than anything else, it boils down to the fact that Validar is simply evil. He doesn't stand for anything. He doesn't represent anything. He doesn't have any real motivations. He's just evil and about power. And it's, it's the lamest weakest sort of antagonist that you can make. Ideally, an antagonist should represent an ideology that opposes the protagonist's ideology, and in defeating them, they vicariously defeat that ideology. They, they, they represent thoughts and ideas and, and themes and historical points, and Validar fails at that. He is the worst aspects of Fire Emblem villains distilled into a pure form he is just evil and it's utterly banal and uncompelling and does not stir people and that's why he's not in heroes hey what Listen. <sighs> what? Hmm. Also, not intimated. There's nothing to... S there was no prior thing of, of a wet fart being like, Ooh, I feel... You know, just have a single line where he's like, I feel at home in these surroundings in this Plegian capital. Look at all this decor of Grima. That's if I think I had one of those hanging over my crib. You know, it doesn't have to be that. Obviously, I'm being a little facetious, but it, you can't just say stuff after the fact. Awakening does this all the fucking time. You know, the 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 Regina Falange army exists only in postscript acknowledgement of what happened you know just you need to actually show us something you can't just tell us something once it's all just said and done no right you all right? Yeah. My lord. What? Ah. Okay, so on one hand, this is kind of okay because you're seeing Risen under someone's control rather than just released and 
and and you know, run amok. But we have already seen that. Back at the Plesian capital... Um, oh yeah, I guess this isn't the Plesian capital. Anyway. Um, Aversa summoned Risen, and they attacked on her orders, and they hold held for her orders and all of that. So you have seen Risen act like this before. I mean... I, I guess it's, you know, behaving like this autonomously? Sure. But, um... Eh, just bad. Just bad. No. Okay. Chapter... Chapter 13, the fun never fucking ends, does it? No, no, it does not. Okay, so I will give this chapter a little bit of credit. It's defeat commander. It's not route. That's about the one good thing in this chapter. I really dislike this chapter. It's... I hope I've gotten better at Fire Emblem to be able to better handle this, but I suspect not. Um, so anyway, let me take a look at... Uh, hate the longbows. I hate the snipers with silver bows with 32 attack and 18 speed. Hate this fucking warrior with a silver axe and 19 at or 39 attack. Jesus. Okay. Um I think I think Gregor and Cordelia are going to sit this one out. Um, I want to bring a wet fart. Do I bring Anna? I might bring Anna. Um. Oh, we have Sherish as well. Where's Sherish? Oh, there's Sherish. Uh, I... Hmm. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I'll bring Sherish instead of Anna. Um. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Um. And I think I'm going to bench Sully and Saul for Frederick and Sumio. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I'm tempted to give Olivia the speed wings, but... I don't think I will. I think that's a, I think that's a bit of a waste because I think if I'm putting her at, in range, I've already kind of lost a bit. Um, I might give it to Shersh so that she doesn't get doubled by some things. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give it to Shersh. All right. Um, you know, I'm gonna uh, take care of the inventory management uh, off screen, and then I'm gonna rejoin you once I'm ready to fight. All right, I think, I think I've got, uh, I think I've got something. Um, I think I've got something. So I'm gonna give this a shot and see how it goes. Uh, probably poorly. <laughs> mm. 
Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> So I know a lot of people really like Henry, and he's fun, and I guess he's to provide some levity to this moment, but I don't really want puns right now. After all the shit this story has thrown at me, it throwing puns at me is not what I need. I need therapy and chocolate. Gods. Wow. Uh. What? So here's Henry. He's slow. That is, I mean, fucking nine speed at this point. Really? Do, how many enemies does he get doubled by? Okay, not these here. He gets doubled by the Myrmidons. Um, doubled by the Sniper. Myrmidons, Sniper, and the boss. Yeah. Um... He snowballs, because everyone in this game fucking snowballs, but... Yeah. Um, pretty fucking bad. Um, Ruin is actually an interesting tome. I like Ruin. Um, it's, a, it's a killing tome, uh, but it has low hit, and I think that's a neat concept. Um, and one I'm probably going to have to rely on. Uh... So I've planned out my opening to the best of my ability. Um, or at least a little bit. Um, no, we have to go here. Okay. Silver Lance is not terrible here. Just get rid of these guys. Alright. Now, do you one-shot this guy? Yes, you do. So... Uh, how far do you reach? You only reach to there. You don't kill the hand axe, though, do you? No. Okay, well, that's fine. So we'll just put you here. Okay. So... You... how do you do? Oh, you don't do well at all. Um... I can't do that. Could do that. Uh... actually, that might work. Oh, I should have moved you two around. That would have been smarter. Yeah, I'm actually gonna do that. Um. All right, second verse, same as the first.
Okay. Now. Now what? Only 60 hit rate. So... Uh, these are... Oh, that's a plain style, so we're gonna put you there. Um, steel axe is fine for now. Then we're gonna put... I prefer him to have the elf fire for the moment. And there, that's good. Um, rally for Henry. Then, yeah, 70 is much better than 60. Um, not only just because it's better, because... Well, shit. Okay. Alright, and let's tag the archers. Annoying little fucks. Um... Any time now. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and dance for you. That's fine. Just get rid of this guy. to tango with these guys. I don't think I do. I think I'm just going to move everyone south. And... I mean, I could just take this guy out. That wouldn't be the worst thing. Just weaken their numbers. If there's turn one ambush spawns, though, I'm going to be really annoyed. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess we'll pair up with you. How many people is that in range? That's in range of two people. 19 speed. She's got enough speed, right? Yeah. So she's not going to get doubled, which is good. Um, Demizel is range 3 here. Get some chip EXP. Alright. Um. Yeah, that's fine. So, Steel Axe for you. Hell Thunder for you. And we'll just separate. That's fine. Oh, that was the wrong way. Well, there you go for him anyway. That's fine. Okay. I'm in good hands. Okay. Rally luck. A skill otherwise so useless they just double the number of luck points it gives you. Good, that's actually what I want. Wow, we are not enjoying that magic today. Okay, that's fine. Just a nuisance. Good, good, that's what I was hoping for. Uh, 
Okay. And here we see a... Uh, I, I keep harping on this, but it, it keeps happening where I am paranoid about these forts spawning more enemies, so I just want to just plop a unit... Well, that won't work. But just plop a unit on top of it and have them sit there for the rest of the map, thereby limiting the number of options I have on player phase, which is the most fun part! But I'm not bitter. Um... All right. I see no reason to rush this map, um, especially while we've got these frickin' forts here. So, um, how's your hit rate shaking out? 97, I'd say that's pretty good. Okay. In fact, I could get him another kill if I wanted to. That's not a bad idea. I would really enjoy for his speed to go up. Um, okay. Um... Let's put you here, bring that axe boy over. Is he using hand axe? No, he's using steel axe, all right, so. Iron axe, yeah. Okay. Just gonna park on forts for this turn. Next turn, we'll, we'll go off of them, but just park there. Um, that's fine. Oh, look at that. You really just got to get doubling at this point, and most of your units will with with time and training. But that's really the threshold. Hey, like I say, got to be doubling. That's so. If you get one stat increase, that's the one to get. Not like HP. Not HP like last time. Um. So that actually gives us a point. Um. Hold on here. All right. So that will give the. Sniper the forest, unfortunately. But I still think that's the best option. We can go with Javelin. And we have that killer lance still. And this is definitely a chance to, or a point to use that. Um, so that's this side taken care of. Um, I guess move Tharja up so you can be helped there. Um, yeah, just keep a wet fart nearby. Seems good. Axes are stupid big in Fire Emblem. Oh, can he not? Oh, he can't take the forest. Okay, all right. I was stupid, never mind. Nice. Very nice. All right, now the boys from the north are coming. They are scary as shit. Um, you can't do anything meaningful this turn, so just heal up. And there's no point equipping two range because fucking longbows. Uh, I guess there would be a can see you, but that's fine. Um. Oh, fucking longbows, right. Yeah. Hmm. Alright, well, how much damage are you doing? You got 23. He's got 17. So he survives that. 
That is not enough. Um, how much might does that have? Nine. Okay, so that's going to be doing an additional 18 attack. So when hitting... That's unusually strong. Can we take that guy out this turn? No. Um, no way. All right. Um, so that's uh, 33, uh, 41 attack. And... I mean, the Wyvern Riders will take that. Probably good. Now can you... Oh, I have my thing on the screen. No. I guess that's fine. Oh, those hit rates, though. Hold on, because she, yeah, reduces a void by 25. So, that's still not great. I mean, I could use two. How, how are you doing with a hand axe? Four and eighty-six. You are doing ninety-two and eight. All right, let's put you here because you will give additional hit. Yeah. There we go. All right. That's one way to take care of it. Nice. Very nice. And again, so he's doing 41 attack. She has 16 defense, so that's going to do um, 25 damage, which she can take, and she does not get doubled. So she's safe. Doesn't look like it, but she's safe. Um, in fact, I'm going to put Long Ku here, because he is safe as well. And they'll give each other a void by being next to each other. All right. So that takes care of this side. You've got Steel Axe, so you're all set if someone comes from there. Um, this side, though. All right, what's your range? All right, let's put you here, heal you up. <laughs> you, though. You are going to be the problem. <sighs> right. 
Um, we're going to put you there. And we're going to dance for you. And you're going to go here. And you're going to use a... Javelin. Yes. Now I can't do anything to stop you, but I think 92 hit. That's good. I am aware, by the way, that this would be significantly easier if I didn't split up my forces, but where's the fun in that? All right, so Sniper is still the biggest threat here. Do I think we don't want to put anyone other than Krom in, ooh, in range. Um, doesn't matter what you have. Doesn't matter what you have. All right. That's a cliff, so you get to go here and protect Olivia from the ambush ones that are going to appear right now. I hate it. I hate it so much. Ooh! Did he just block the sniper? Nicely done. He has a hand axe. And those boys are still coming. Didn't pull the fucking sniper. Um, <laughs> um, Damn it. Seems to be the only way Frederick's doing serious damage here. I still have not gotten a single Lunar proc. Alright. I must have had um, a void plus 10. All right. Now, Awakening isn't cruel enough to do two turns of ambush spawns in a row, right? Like, that's not a, that's not a, that's not how this works, right? Um... Oh, he has a hand axe. Hmm. He 
has a hand axe. 18. Fuck it. If you what 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 is a killing tome for if not this? Ah, rally, rally. <laughs> I hate you, Henry. I hate you. Just kill him. Just destroy him. I don't care anymore. Alright. Um. What the fuck do I do here? I swear to God, if there's more fucking ambush spawns. Fucking again. <sighs> All right, you have a hand axe, so let's pull you into sp wait can you you can't get into the fort all right so it doesn't really matter um no nah, i guess it's better to do this uh no no yeah yeah i don't need the killer lance for this oh Oh. Okay. Good. That will help you. It will stave off your retirement. Really? You don't double this guy? Oh, right, because it's five instead of four. Because of stat inflation. Okay. Now I'm expecting reinforcements from this these fucking forts. Um I mean, hey, if it works. I was really hoping Donald would do a dual strike. But such things are not meant to be. All 
Alright, I think I gotta use you to crush this guy, don't I? Okay, well, thankfully I have all these flyers here. Um... Just kill him. a hand axe. Alright, hang on a sec. Okay. You... I can kill. Which means you... I can kill. No. Well, maybe. So, how much? 12. And how much? No, that's too much. Okay. Do I try this again? Now he doesn't get doubled by quite so many things. All right. I think I have a plan. Yeah, I think I have a plan. Well, that's one way to take care of him. Donald. What the fuck? Um, okay. Um, alright, then we're first gonna use you and see if you get a crit. Yeah. 
No. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Now, all of this is for nothing if these fucking forts spawn another fucking person. Um... Well, maybe not for nothing. I think I, I think I can, I can make this work. That is the same freaking hit. We gotta get you an iron axe for more hit. Okay. Victory. All right. Um. No, no, not risking that. Not risking that. Um... I do not see fucking ambush spawns appearing. As I knock something over. <sighs> Alright, I'm just... What, what's your... You're a fucking longbow guy, aren't you? Alright, so we're just gonna put you... Here. Um, Roy's blade, sure. You motherfuckers. You... Dirty... Rotten... Bastards. What the fuck? Warrior ambush spawns. 